G'day guys and girls. To a pig hunter, the tusks and the weight generally are the most important thing. And that's why a lot of pig hunters will keep the jaws like that. Not everybody does. I'm not a trophy hunter, I'm a meat hunter. But I still kept that one because it tells a story. Which brings me to the one in the background there. That's Harold. Harold also tells a story. As a little boy I grew up looking at Harold on the wall. My father was a hunter, a meat hunter. Although he would take capes out of the bush and he'd give them to taxidermists who would do them for other hunters that didn't have a cape to match their horns. I grew up eating tar meat. Young bucks or nannies dad would take for the meat. So, this is a film, this is a story about a dream that I've had my entire life. As a little boy growing up, I would look at that on the wall, I think my father, up there in the Alpine, freezing cold, I'd imagine my big strong dad with his 3006 in his pack, doing the hard yards, walking in. He'd be away for four or five days sometimes, and coming home, and mum would say, what do you've got? And he'd have this meat. We had a big tar rug in the kitchen, and that's what I grew up seeing, so I always wanted to do it. But years went by and I just didn't get the opportunity to until very recently. This video is not a hunting video. I didn't even film anything getting shot. I did a bit of pig hunting and I went up there and saw some tar. This is a video about a bloke fulfilling a dream. Often as YouTubers we do things to create videos. This time I did something and it created a video. But it wasn't ever designed to make a video. It was something personal that I want to share with you guys. So sit back and enjoy. What can you smell, Paul, eh? Hey, what's that? Nothing. Hey, mate, Glenn gave me that. It's avocado oil. Made with some butter. That's what I'm frying this in. Over here, it's a bus park and someone else, but there's a waterfall there, and a mate of mine went over it in his kayak, and he broke his neck. I'll show you. Part of this trip is just having fun. Not just to shoot an animal, but enjoy this. Go on the road with my dogs. Mm. Cook up some mushrooms. Oh, they're delicious. My neighbour in the house, bus is leaving. I think some people just uh, have evolved to eat meat. And I think I'm one of those people. They're travelling around with their dog. Great thing to do. When you retire, sell your home, because you can't take it with you. Buy a great big massive, well that wasn't that big, but something you can live and you can travel and see the country. Well after a feed of mushrooms and meat and more importantly fat, I'm a happy chap. As I go further south, I'm really starting to feel the cold already. I'm not that far south yet. Which makes me think, what's it going to be like when I get right down there, eh? Good place to let the dogs off for a run. I come down here every time I'm, I'm bringing the dogs, except when birds are nesting down here. There's trout in this river. She feels nice and cool. Heel up. So many beautiful places in New Zealand, you can just drive around and everywhere you go it's just beautiful. This country is just bloody beautiful, everywhere you go. Go through the South Island, it's beautiful. Go up the North Island, it's beautiful. Different places, you get different terrain, you get different plants, you get different foliage growing everywhere. The mountainside's different. And you get over the West Coast and you get all that sort of wet forest, rainforest. Amazing how it's all developed and grown because of the Southern Alps, what that's done and how it's created the plant life and that. But just throughout everywhere you go, just bloody beautiful. I love it. We're on the other side of Lewis Pass now. There's plenty of snow. Well, that didn't turn it too good, did it? Bugger! We're going to verify my rifle. Rich has got this range. We've got uh, 300 there and 400 behind. That's 200. And we've got 100 down here, which is absolutely perfect. Just to make sure that everything's straight. And Richard's setting up the uh, 300 now. That's probably as far as we'll go. That's 200 metres. 
You know, you're not flash up there, eh? Nah, or down, but you probably you were trying to get comfortable. You weren't that comfortable. Yeah, I wasn't comfortable that first one. But, but then in your next run, at 300, you were comfortable. It's even better. Yeah, I can't complain about that. So probably, um, I wonder if I got a, a click too much. No, that's good, eh? No, nah, leave it. Don't leave touch it, it mate. Yeah, 300, that's all right. Richard leaving now and I'm right up behind him. It's 10 past one and I'm feeling absolutely stoked at how my rifle is shooting because I'm not the world's best marksman by country mile. I used to be when I was younger, but the old eyes are not what they used to be. So to be in a group that big at 300 has given me a lot of confidence with my shooter. I know I can shoot better than that too. They were just sort of kind of squeeze the trigger and hope sort of shots I'd had a coffee and I was a bit jittery and I was also a little bit anxious I suppose if I'm honest about how I felt because there's been a lot building up to getting my rifle shooting straight when this morning to Gun City. Thank you Owen at Gun City, he was just brilliant there in Christchurch Brants helping me out with the ballistics and the settings and really there's nothing else that, uh, to do now except to drive for another hour which is what we're going to do and get the stuff to the hut and then put my pack on my back and my rifle and go into the mountains and try and find a tar. We just stopped here for a piss stop and this is Lake Apua. It's got salmon and it's got trout in it. Be a bit of duck shooting going here too, wouldn't there Richard? Not that you'd do it. Uh, yeah, we bit. It's big country up here and it's been washed out with the flood so we're actually really lucky to be able to get up here. We wouldn't have got up here even a, probably a week ago. The bulldozer has been clearing the track. So a lot of things came together to make this hunt possible where I thought it might not but uh, we're going to get there in the end. She's really been washed out so much. Fences are gone, roads are gone. So she's getting up here. I'm glad I've got mud grips on. I'm glad I'm not uh, running all terrains. I'm glad I've got full mud grips because we need them. Richard's wagon's bouncing around the front and he's towing his quad and it's on the back of the trailer and it's all jumping up and down. It's like, holy shit, how long is that going to stay on for? Little pug, have a look up in here. I'm trying to work out where there's a pig. Well, it looks like a pig bed just beside that rock there, a bit of brown, but just in there. Dogs all shot up here, 100 mile an hour. Something here. Post just started to head up here now by herself. She's crossed the river, there'd be a pig up there, she's not doing it for no reason. She's not putting the hard yards in, there'd be a pig in there. Hopefully, uh, something happens. She's looking back to see where the other dogs are coming. Look, she looked just had to stop and look. Okay, I'll go by myself. Yeah, the problem with it, mine's going 285 metres the other way. Oh, can it easily be another pig? Easy. She's still going up that gully. She's making her way quite quick. Oh, this would be great if she'd get something up there. I've lost her now. Poe's still climbing quite high now, she's got off the camera. And Richard saw dogs, how far buddy? Mm, like mm. above us, 207. Oh, around above us over here? Up here, 207. Well, that'd be good. Richard's gone down here because his dogs are right above us here. So they're split up and they could catch their own pigs. I haven't got a rifle with me or anything, so this would be interesting. <laughs> could be quite fun. Oh, there she goes. She's, she's going higher, shit. She is tracking all the way up there. I don't know if you guys can see that on the side of the face. She's just there. She stopped and she's listening. She's trying to smell. She's trying to work out where it is. She's moving again. She's coming down. She's coming down. Trying to work out where it is. Trying to find it. She's just hunting right now. Oh, she's coming down quite fast. She might have seen the other dogs moving. Mm. No. She might have heard Richard's dogs barking, they might have lifted her off it. She didn't go all the way up there for nothing. There's something up there, but something's turned her. 
She might have seen something. It's coming down pretty fast. Do they cover some ground, don't they? Yep, okay, she's like said nah. We'll come back down and see what the other dogs are doing. She got to be pretty quick. We're just gonna see any dogs back up where Poe's just been. Where you go, Poe, where you go? See if I can get onto it. There's definitely something up there, but she just can't work out where the hell it is. Now Poe's taking the other side, she's gone up. So there's something there that's mo moving her. Eh? It's going with reasonable speed too. I reckon she needs to go a bit higher. Let's have another, another crack at it. We've made a wee bit of noise down here. I don't think anyone would have heard us with the noise of the river, so we can still be sitting quiet. This might be better for Poe, getting the wind on the side. There goes uh, both the richest dogs. There's the other one there going up. It's his mane and the daughter, I think. Yeah. And Poe's up quite a bit high. She's just uh, getting into that. Yeah, yep, just now. Shot. That's where I wanted to go, so... Hopefully it's as far as my phone can zoom. Nah, don't go down there, Poe. Keep going up. Go up. Need to go up. Well, I reckon it's higher than that. She is. That's what I wanted to do. She's looking around to see where the other dogs are for backup. She, she knows there's a pig in the area. Gee, she's way up there. Miles up. How long is it going to take you to get up there? Can't find it. She's going back and forward, back and forward. There she goes. Yeah, well, it could be there too. Could have, could have stuck down the back. Oh yeah, Poe didn't pull that hard work in for, for nothing. Good. Well, I'd like to get a 160 here. It's not bad. There goes Richard's dogs. Not too far behind. Poe's gone into that sort of basin, so we can't see where she is now, but she's in there, and that's where I reckon the pig will be if it is going to be anywhere. I was just saying to Richard before, I think that's where it'll be, so... Up on the skyline. Yeah. Deer? The nice to see them. Look at those, it just makes me hungry. Oh, there we go, there's Richard's dog. Poe's not far away. They're right at the top piece now. I'm as far out as the phone, your dog's come back down. Something there, they can't work out where the hell it is. Squeal. They got it. They got it. It's yeah, just a wee one. It'll be dead by the time we get there, Richard. It was uh, Poe's first find in some southern country. She hasn't been in this country before, and she did well. It wasn't a big pig, but it was really good for Richard's pups, because they actually fired up and went up. It was only a small pig, probably 20 pound. Probably dead by the time they got close to it. But all good practice, and... We can only get bigger pigs, they can't get any smaller than that because that was probably a little bit bigger than Richard's boot. Do you catch a pig in your first one here, eh? Yeah? Only a wee one. No, oh, maybe they can get bigger, eh? Good job. We're going to tail, happy. That's her first pig since she got ripped up on a boar a couple of weeks ago. A lot of the road up here has been completely washed out. Richard getting across the river okay. Poe's been getting a little bit of scent. Just up in the scully, haven't you, Poe? Where's the pig, Poe? Hey? Back up here. I think I've taken the wrong road. I need to back up. Holy shit, that's Flash. Home. Yeah, Richard? I said home, sweet home. Yeah, it's awesome, mate. Wicked. Happy days. Richard's taking his dogs for a walk just up that gully up there and I'm going to go right around here and up that gully there so I'm going to put collars on dogs and get moving before it gets dark I'm going to head up this gully here well, I haven't gone very far and there's a good pig mark just down here quite a good one good pig mark there it's been a pig around here and some rooting in here it's not too old, not too fresh either but there's been a pig in here good, and there's cap turds have been turned over. It could be a good place. Oh, it's just gone up in here. There'll be a pig up in there for sure. She's taken off in a hell of a hurry. Oh, it's all been rooted up in there. That old face has been rooted up. It's pretty dark now, so the camera's trying to pull the light in, but there's got to be a pig around here somewhere. I'd expect to bail up any minute. They've got a pig. 
they got one. Cool. Oh, fight. Better get up there. Better go. Well, that was hard work because the dogs were pulling it into this thick stuff down here and I was trying to stick it. And uh, Poe had that pig contained pretty much in the beginning. You get on the back. Nice ball. Yeah, good one. Good girl, Poe. My dogs haven't hunted in this sort of country very much. It's new to them and it's always difficult for dogs in different terrains. Sometimes they don't hunt well, but Poe's. She's, she's doing it, she, she found that boar and the other two dogs, well, they made a bit of a mess of it actually. Poe had it well contained without those guys jumping all over it, but that's okay, good practice. Here you go, girl, eat up. Good girl. Good girl. Good dog. Good tucker. There's something in it she likes. What dog doesn't like the heart? You can see where I've stuck it, I actually side stuck it, and that's what I do, I just cut it right through there. Big seat. Eat that boy, good boy. Here be, eat up. Good dogs, good dogs, good tucker. Good girl po. Right, drop the guts out, we'll take it back to the hut. I dragged this boar probably about, I don't know, 20 minutes, and then I realised I got a radio, and Rich has got a truck, and uh, there's a bit of a track, and I don't know if you can see now, but there's a light coming towards us. I don't know why I'm bloody carrying it. He's got the quad bike, we'll just throw it on that. I'm not used to this sort of hunting, but I, I can live with it very easily. It's bloody good. Oh, that was exhilarating catching that. Great way to end the day, and the day's not end yet. I haven't eaten for a couple of days, so I'm pretty hungry, but I'm also pretty, pretty stoked. Oh, yes, very good. Good stuff. Nice boar. Well, it's the next morning. It's pretty cold. Dogs haven't run around. Richard's still in the truck. That'll do. Calm down. Sit down, Poe. having their peas. So we're going to be going up this mountain today and around. I'm not quite sure exactly where Rich is going to show me where to get started and uh, I think we can take the, the quad bike a wee way up the gully but I'm not sure how far. Jeez it's pretty frozen still. You don't need a fridge up here to keep your meat. You can go up there ride around and then get to the tops. Richard tells me there's lots of walking so I'm warm for it. Got my nice Mitlick guard jacket on. I don't think they're, they've even seen us. Oh, just finished a bit of a climb. Look at the wind in our favour. I won't be shooting them. Because Tara is on the menu.